Hi, welcome to our CLAPS presentation, Assessment is Constructed and Contextual, a faculty librarian pilot to explore critical approaches to, critical, to curriculum and assessment. My name is Nicole Branch, and I'm the co-interim university librarian and uh, associate university librarian for learning and engagement at Santa Clara University. I'm Lauren Pfeiffer, and I am a lecturer in the core writing program. And I'm Julia Voss. I am Associate Professor of English at Santa Clara. So to talk to you a little bit about our presentation goals, we're hoping to share findings from a study that we're currently have started and are going forward with about first year writing students in information literacy. Specifically, we're interested in how the way that students approach research tasks affects what they learn in terms of writing and information literacy. And particularly, we're looking into the promise that document based interviews, the methodology that we used hold as a critical assessment methodology for learning about students' information literacy learning. Specifically, some of our early findings that are particularly interesting that we're gonna share with you today suggest the differential and hidden learning experiences and capacities that students who are traditionally underrepresented in the academy have, as well as what critical assessment practices can do for us in terms of revealing those learning outcomes. So we've divided our presentation into three different short videos. I'll be delivering the rest of this video, which will focus on an introduction to our study and a literature review. Julia will give the second video, which will describe the study that we did and some of our preliminary results. And then Nicole will give the third video, which will be a discussion and go over some of the implications of our findings. All right. I'm Lauren Pfeiffer, and I'm going to be walking you through the first video of our presentation, which focuses on an introduction to what we've done and a literature review focusing on assessment in the library science field and also assessment in writing studies. So when we were putting together our project, we very much drew on the ACRL's information literacy frames and also on the NCTE uh, habits of mind for success in post-secondary writing. These norms really helped us to frame our curriculum as we created it. But as we move forward with our project, what we, we became really interested in was assessment. This was not necessarily where we thought we were going when we started, but a lot of what happened in our project over time, as you'll hear more about in the second video, really led us to think about how assessment works at universities. So there are kind of two categories of assessment. Traditional assessment is... Um, has focused on evaluating student work according to a single standard. It emphasizes measurability, replicability, reliability, scalability, those kinds of things. Whereas critical assessment, which is where kind of the scholarship on assessment has been moving, is much more, much more thinks about assessment as a social action that has political impacts, has material impacts, um, thinks about assessment as something that should be guided by principles of trustworthiness, and um, thinks of learning and evaluation as social processes that demand a social constructionist rather than a more objectivist approach to assessment like you might see in traditional assessment. So the kind of umbrella organization that thinks about assessment is NILOA, the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessment. And earlier this year, they issued a report about assessment and that report really emphasized how important equity should be in thinking about assessment. So um, the kind of pull quotation is there on your screen. This report calls for those who lead and participate in assessment activities to pay attention and be conscious of how assessment can either feed into cycles that perpetuate inequities or can serve to bring more equity into higher education. So in the field of writing studies, scholarship on assessment has some of it has looked at challenges and some of it, as we'll see on the next slide, has looked at solutions. As far as the challenges go, the first one might seem sort of clear, right? Instructor prompts and student performance don't necessarily match what instructors want to measure. Writing assessment is also not objective. Teachers score their student products differently based on their own background, based on the backgrounds of their students. And then ultimately, assessment can maintain inequality. So what do we do about that? Well, writing studies also has some solutions that might increase the equity of assessment. One is to use more varied types of evidence. So one model of this is the portfolio model, which is really common in writing studies. But some work has kind of problematized the portfolio model and has argued instead 
that assessment methods are what really have to change, that assessment shouldn't be um, an attempt to fit evidence of learning into rubrics, basically, but rather should be a kind of process of inquiry. Another way that we can try to make assessment more equitable is to include the voices of students, especially marginalized ones, as we're thinking about assessment. So one way to do this is through surveys and interviews, as we'll talk more about in the second and third parts of our presentations. And then another way is to actually take student complaints seriously, something that can be a little hard for teachers to do, but there's certainly a lot of information in those complaints. And so really what we want to do is ultimately design assessments so that their outcomes advance equity and kind of place equity at the center of thinking about writing studies, or, or the, sorry, place um, equity at the center of thinking about assessment and how we do assessment. And one real proponent of this approach is Asawa Noi, um, whose work we'll talk a little bit more about in a second here. As far as the, lighting, the library studies world goes, there's been a conversation about critical assessment and about um, critical information literacy going on in library studies for quite a while. I'm in the writing studies world, so this is all um, stuff that our librarian partner has told me and my writing studies colleague about. Um, this movement kind of began with James Elmborg's work. Uh, he advocated for critical practices in libraries, and then his ideas kind of um, grew out to encompass a number of different kinds of work in libraries from uh, learning analytics, archives and special collections, cataloging, and then also came to encompass kind of critical assessment. Um, Maria Cardi has this article from about 10 years ago where she's really making the case that critical assessment can also happen in the library classroom. And she argues for how library instructors can engage with institutional power through assessment because of library instructors' kind of differential position vis-a-vis -vis the university than faculty members. And then this conversation about critical assessment in the library has sort of grown over time, including this more recent piece towards a critical assessment practice, which emphasizes the importance of interrogating assessment in libraries. So kind of to frame some of the conclusions that we have drawn in our study that my colleagues will go on to talk about in the second and third uh, presentations here, the second and third videos. Assessment is functions according to a white norm. And Asawa Noi, whom I mentioned earlier, uh, in his piece, Classroom Writing Assessment as an Anti-Racist Practice, has this sort of moment where he really spells this out very clearly. He says, white supremacy is structured into the ways everyone reads and judges writing, we are all implicated no matter how we identify ourselves or our political beliefs. And so one of the things we've been really thinking about in our work is kind of how to deconstruct that aspect of assessment, how to take, how to make assessment, how to sort of be really self-aware about the fact that assessment is race conscious rather than race neutral, and how to then use some of the information that we're getting from our students to make it more equitable. So um, again, we have Inouye here, his work on the left of this slide. All assessment programs have built-in biases. These systems privilege the learning and achievement of some student groups over others, and we have to change those assessment methods and, and ideology. So one way of changing this is Inouye's concept of the labor-based grading contract, which has had real influence in writing studies. Um, and then just over there on the right is a reminder that, you know, even if we think of our assessment practices as being colorblind, well, colorblind practices are not not racist, right? Um, and so what we're really trying to move toward in our presentation and what the assessment world in general, both in writing studies and in library studies, has helped to move toward is a model of assessment that is critical um, and that is equity minded.